Okay, let's look at questions 7 through 10 of your notes. You're using these words, and um, as always, you could always use more, uh, one word more than once. So number 7 says, a blank divides a segment into two equal parts and makes a 90 degree angle with the segment. So remember that was our first fold. This is what divided the segment to two equal parts and made the 90 degree angle. So what was this called? This was called a perpendicular bisector. So again, the symbol for perpendicular is an upside down T, perpendicular bisector. Number eight, every point on the blank is equidistant from the two endpoints of the segment. So remember, these were the points that were equidistant from the two endpoints of the segment. And all of these points were on this figure that is again called the perpendicular bisector. Number nine, the perpendicular bisectors of the three sides of a triangle intersect at the, and that was this point R right here. And that point R has a special name called the circumcenter. Circumcenter is where the three perpendicular bisectors intersect. Remember, consonant, consonant. This point of intersection is the center of the, this is the center of the circle, and that circle is called the circumscribed circle. So the in center was the center of the inscribed circle. The circumcenter is the center of the circumscribed circle. Now let's look at our example, number 11. We are given in this figure these little dotted lines. If you'll look real carefully, they're making right angles with this side of the triangle, and you can tell by the tick marks that it's also bisecting those sides. So all of these dotted lines are perpendicular bisectors. So that tells me that this point C is a circumcenter because that's the name of the point of intersection for perpendicular bisectors. And remember, it's the center of the circumscribed circle going through the three vertices of that triangle. So remember, if this is the center of that circle, then remember we have a name for that distance from the center to any point on that circle, and that's called the radius. So C to N, C to P, and C to K are all radii of that circle, which tells me those are all the same distances, all the same lengths. So C N, C P, and C K are all equal lengths, all equal distances. So we are given B to N is eight, and N to K, which is this whole distance right here, as 20. And first we're asked to find P to B, well, remember, if this is a perpendicular bisector, point B is a midpoint. These two are the same length. So B to N is 8, B to P is also 8. So we could write PB equals 8. PN would be that whole side, which is simply 8 plus 8, which is 16. Over here, since we know um, N to K is 20, well, if this is a perpendicular bisector, we're separating that to two equal parts. Each of these equal parts would have to each be 10 to add up to be 20. So A to K is one of those parts. A to K would have to be 10. Now here comes in that circumcenter. It tells me that C to K is 12 and wants to know what C to P is. Remember, C to K, C to P, and C to N are all the same length. So C to P is also 12. C says if the distance of C to N is 3x minus 10 and the distance CK is x squared minus 20, what's the distance from CP? Well, CN, CK, and CP are all equal. So when I'm given expressions for CN and CK, I could simply set those equal to each other. So we've had an example similar to this on 1.3 where we have a quadratic. And so remember, we want to get all terms on one side set equal to zero, and we want to keep x squared positive. So the 3x and the negative 10 are what gonna, are going to move, and don't forget to change their signs. So we're setting this equal to zero. We're maintaining the positivity of x squared. 3x comes over and becomes negative 3x. The negative 10 comes over and becomes positive 10, 
and it can combine with the negative 20 to make negative 10. Negative 20 plus 10 is negative 10. So we need factors of negative 10. Remember that means your signs have to be opposites. And we're looking for which pair adds to get a negative 3. And that's the positive 2 and negative 5. So my binomial factors are x plus 5, x minus 2. 5 times negative 2 is negative 10. 5 plus negative 2 is negative. Oh, I did my signs wrong, didn't I? This should be a negative and a positive. So good thing that I um, double-checked. I circled the right thing and wrote them wrong. I mean, wrote it wrong up here. So negative 5 times 2 is negative 10. Negative 5 plus 2 is negative 3. So remember, that doesn't tell me x is negative 5 or x is 2. We use the zero product property to say if this times this is zero, then either the x minus 5 has to be zero or the x plus 2 has to be zero. Solving these for x gives me the values of x to be 5 or negative 2. Now, in this case, that was not what the question asked for. It did not say find the value of x. It said find the distance cp. Well, I'm going to substitute these values in for cn and ck. They should equal each other and would also give me what cp is. Well, if I put 5 in for x here, 3 times 5 is 15, minus 10 is 5. So cn would equal 5. If I put it in for ck, I would have 5 squared minus 20. 5 squared is 25, minus 20 is also 5. So ck would equal 5. So that tells me cp is equal to 5. Now we could have a possible second solution. Let's try negative 2. Well, if we put negative 2 in for x, 3 times negative 2 is negative 6. Negative 6 minus 10 gives me negative 16. Does that make sense for a distance from this center to this point? No. And so this value of x does not make sense and will not give me a second value of cp. This is the only answer that makes sense in that case. Okay, so that is it for lesson 5.